Hello everyone, I'm Force McFree Lava, and this is Speedplay Germany in Hearts of Iron 4, number 8. We left off having seized Moscow, having driven deep into the depths of the Soviet heartland, and now at this point we're setting up a few new attack routes, the idea being we're going to try to cut off Soviet forces in the Finnish area, and then just charge across the rest of their countryside. Now this is quite a few attack moves set up, and I believe the AI only set something like 13 divisions for the main thrust throughout the entire center of the Soviet Union. In the West, we deal with all these small pocketed allied attacks, and we just move all of our armored forces in two real directions. Uh, basically, some small group is going to go up and seize Leningrad, since that's worth a lot of victory points. The others are going to go seize Stalingrad for the same reason. And then just generally drive through the Soviet hinterland hopefully just destroying the whole thing, seizing what we can, and bringing the war to a rather speedy close. Now, how exactly well this is going to do in actuality remains to be seen. However, we have driven quite a bit into the Soviet Union, so I'm not really too worried about it. The only thing that's upsetting is the fact that none of the attack orders seem to have any troops uh, actually assigned to them, but we can just take manual control, which is honestly the single greatest upshot of Hearts of Iron 4 from Hearts of Iron 3 is that even if areas are controlled by the AI, you can just direct them yourself. Now, uh, I'm a little... well, yeah, whatever, that is a good thing. No matter how much you can complain about the AI needing the direction, it is nice that you can provide it, and I guess it does do decently well just moving vaguely forward. So moving vaguely forward we shall, as we drive our forces really just into any gap between the Soviet lines, the sheer amount of Soviet forces we have imprisoned, or we have uh, encircled and then, I guess, stack wiped would be a good thing, perhaps just forced to uh, surrender, uh, really is apparent now just by the fact that so many areas of the Soviet countryside have no divisions in them whatsoever. Now, there are areas with a lot, such as in the north and over here in the east, but in the center, you'll notice there are precious few Soviet divisions actually resisting us, which is allowing our armored columns to just drive forward, trapping the forces that do exist and that are actually fighting against us. So overall, it's very positive for us, and uh, probably a just devastating situation for the Soviets. We are also working to just destroy any pockets that may form, and just generally keep moving forward. I don't imagine it will be too long at all until we have armies in Stalingrad and in Leningrad. From there, we'll see just how far we have to go in order to get all the way into, well, as far as we need to go for the Soviets to surrender. There are a few towns that we can take that we're probably going to have to. Overall, though, it's uh, just generally a matter of keeping the front line moving and we are having really no trouble with that since we have all of these mobile units. Now, uh, someone did ask me why I haven't been uh, augmenting our tank forces with all of the land experience that we have. Uh, quite frankly, it's because that never even occurred to me to be a thing to do. We have been having issues keeping our production up with demand, and I'm not actually certain if that would take from it and slow down our production of new tanks and things. At this point, we could probably completely stop producing new land units, as honestly, we probably have as big of an army as we will need for the rest of really just conquering the world. And we're going to need to shift over into, say, naval production and aircraft production, as those are going to be the two places we're really falling behind on. How exactly well we make that transition, uh, well, that is going to be the rest of the series to tell us that. The main thing, though, is we need to just go ahead and destroy the Soviet Union, whatever is left of its resistance, and then we can focus 100% on what comes next. Now there are still allied units in Europe, we are fighting them off decently well, and they really are not taking priority whatsoever. Stalingrad, the new capital of the Soviet Union, is probably, there we go, captured right now. There we go, fall of Stalingrad, we're also charging up to Leningrad, the new new capital of the Soviet Union and just pocketing and destroying all these Soviet forces, as has really just been our way for some time now. And yeah, you'll notice that resistance is really falling apart, which is pretty great news. We are having a bit of an issue with our uh, just importing of rare resources. We also, uh, let's see, 
are having a problem with our air force as that's not really doing very much at all. We still have a lot of our air forces bombarding Belarus, which is really pointless since we have the entirety of Belarus. Although that does show you just how well our army is doing that we have already advanced into an entirely new Soviet region. So we go ahead and just move everybody up. We'll go charge into central Russia where things are going decently well, but not as well as they could be. And all right, I believe that is the fall of Leningrad. The way I have uh, this recording set up is I can't actually see that while doing the overview bits. And yes, it was the fall of Leningrad. All right, so with that all done, we still have a very large amount of Soviet forces just actively resisting us and not really any targets to seek out, which is a slightly unfortunate mix. We could just roll on into the Caucasus region and probably up in the north a little bit, just keep pushing them back, not really for any strategic reason, just to uh, get a bit of a buffer between their armies and our newfound uh, victory points. We also send some motorized divisions off uh, in the general direction of more victory points and just manually command the army groups to uh, just start going forward, not really after anything, but to just move forward, move the front line. Uh, Finland just capitulated, which is rather sad, mainly to the United States, which is kind of worrying, but at the same time also nice since they could expand for days and days and months over in Finland and not really affect the rest of the war whatsoever. And yes, so with that all said, we are just charging forward just moving all of our units to the best extent we can. It's kind of gotten to the point where it is slightly more tedious than anything else, even with the AI controlling the vast majority of our forces. We do control a lot of our mechanized groups, which is somewhat bad, just because it means that the front line in general will not move up as quickly as our lead elements, which are now rather dispersed throughout the majority of just the Soviet frontier. Uh, we are making a pretty large armored push in one or two areas though, and we did end up getting one unit trapped behind enemy lines, but enemy lines have a tendency to uh, fall back pretty quickly, so that's not the most worrying thing. It looks like we're pulling troops from just even Western Europe, which is not exactly ideal. We don't need any more forces. We go ahead and just make one overarching attack plan. Hopefully that way everyone will just kind of go forward and not worry so much. Uh, that does have the negative effect of not showing up uh, front lines on pocketed areas, so we'll have to deal with those manually. Other than that though, it's all going fairly well. We do also go ahead and just set up AI orders for the majority of our mechanized forces, and we're going to just have them charge headlong into the Soviet Union. I'm kind of done commanding all 48 of those units. Uh, some occasional groups which are split off, we are going to just be manually controlling, although the overall activity on the front line is now going to just be left to the AI. And eventually we will have to worry about fighter production. In fact, we should probably have been worrying about that a lot just consistently throughout. And, you know, I have been, but ineffectually. What we really need to do, though, is get the Soviet Union to capitulate, and then we can focus 100% on everything else. We haven't really lost very much manpower. We did have something like 2 million, but then we switched focuses for a better um, industrial production, and that took about a million people out of our manpower reserves. So we do have a warning about low manpower, but honestly we've lost something like 200,000 people in this war compared to something like over a million Soviets. So manpower is probably not going to be a legitimate concern, and if it does become one, then we can always just switch to a more manpower heavy uh, focus. Besides all that, it's just generally letting the AI move forward. We might take command eventually. Uh, Japan is kind of just holding out, which is unfortunate since Vladivostok would probably be enough to push the Soviets to surrender. I notice we have two mechanized units not really facing any opposition near victory points, so we just send them into the Caucasus. And hopefully they'll just make a drive down and seize every victory point in the region. The Turks are also, pre are also pressing out, so that's good news for us. And we'll just keep on driving forward. We are also going to take some control of these elements and move them over to those victory points which we had kind of thrusted at and then abandoned earlier. We also try to attack right there, fail, and then just order the AI to stop. And, <clears throat> of course, though, they just immediately attack again. 
Uh, we are just charging everywhere we can. Astrakhan is an important province, really just any important province we can get a hold of we're going after with the full weight of our armies, or at least the full weight of whatever divisions we'd managed to grab onto. And yes, that is really where we've been, where we're going. Long term, we're going to have a probably rather uphill fight against the Allies as we just gear our production towards really anything that we can use to fight them with. Uh, and we're going to have to worry quite a bit about occupation of all the provinces that we've taken over. We might just turn most of our infantry groups into military police by just adding military police elements to them. I'm not sure how to give AI orders to just kind of disperse our forces throughout occupied territories. So that's going to be an interesting thing to discover. Hopefully we won't have to do that manually. And uh, once the Soviet Union does fall, we do have two armored groups. We could probably just send one into the Middle East to just clean up that whole area and the other to go support the Japanese and clean up Southeast Asia. Alternatively though, we might need to, or we might want to have an armored group uh, fully dedicated to just waiting in Western Europe so that when we do eventually get naval and aerial superiority, we can just charge on across the British Isles. And the longer we wait to fight uh, that fight, the more defensive they'll probably be, unless we can destroy enough of their forces in Asia. At any rate though, we are encircling the last few Soviet victory points within anything resembling easy reach of ourselves. Hopefully that will be enough to turn the war in our, well not favor, but uh, to end the war really. As they don't really have very much, we did just take a couple, and uh, this moment of severe lag uh, shows you that the Soviet Union has just capitulated. So just like that, there are a few pockets of resistance. Uh, Tanatuva and the other Soviet states over in Asia are still doing their thing, so we're going to send one armored group over to just deal with them. And there we go, now we can go ahead and set up our demands in this peace deal. Uh, I go ahead and just kind of dither around with it for a moment, but it looks as though we'll be able to just grab quite a bit of territory, which is rather nice, honestly. And we just go ahead and select as much as we can. This kind of does cut off most of our Western allies from getting anything, but I really don't mind doing that. Uh, we get to a point where we're demanding a little bit too much and we can't actually make good on these demands, though it would be a kind of nice border to get. Uh, we go ahead and just kind of shimmy it back and forth. I wish there was a bit more, uh, I guess, convenient interface to let you know how much land you can actually take before you need to pass up your turn. Uh, we did take the one turn though, we got all of that land, now we're going to rush forward and take as much as we can in the next. The Japanese are taking quite a bit of land despite the fact that they're not really able to do anything. We could take those two portions, but we don't. Instead we just kind of exit the peace deal and let what happens happens. Someone decided to puppet the Russian Empire just in the middle of Japan, so that's kind of annoying. But uh, we got a tremendous amount of territory, which is pretty great news. And uh, with that, we essentially won at least the land portion of this fight. We'll have to send some troops over to clean up Asia and probably a bit of Africa. So imagine we're going to get kind of bogged down in that after a while. Uh, ultimately, though, it's time that we shift our focus to Navy and Air Force, and we'll deal with all of that in the episodes to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.